everybody. This is John Hope Bryant, founder, chairman, and chief executive officer of Operation Hope. I'm in San Francisco, uh, the Bay Area, on uh, meeting with uh, partners. I'm about to go in to meet with the CEO of uh, uh, one of the largest banks uh, in the country about our work and uh, in amplifying our work in, uh, in these communities. But I wanted to talk to you and unpack something that uh, may not be as obvious as I would like to think. It's called credit scores. Um, so I've talked about uh, in philosoph philosophically, I've said that civil rights was waged and won in the streets. By the way, I'm John O'Brien, founder, chairman, and CEO of Operation Hope, uh, and the author of How the Poor Can Save Capitalism, Rebuilding the Path to the Middle Class, The Solution for the 100%. I'm also uh, the author of Love Leadership, The New Way to Lead in a Fear-Based World, uh, both bestsellers. Uh, and CEO of Brian Ventures. Essentially, I'm an entrepreneur and a, uh, some people call a thought leader and a philanthropist. Uh, so if you're signing in from wherever you are, uh, hello, uh, I see you signing in, Elise, uh, Juma, uh, Mark Love, Carl Jones, David, uh, Alan, uh, see you all signing in. Uh, we're gonna get uh, knee deep in this topic on my way to this meeting in, uh, in San Francisco. And I may do one more video later uh, this uh, early evening. Uh, so I've talked about civil rights being waged and won in the streets and civil rights being waged and won in the suites. Um, that civil rights was about race and the color line and civil rights is going to be about class and poverty. I've talked about the new color being green. Whether you're white, black, red, brown, or yellow, you want to see some more green. Um, I've talked about how, the fact that today if you're living in an American city, uh, you probably are living from paycheck to paycheck. You've got too much month at the end of your money. Uh, so this is uh, irrespective of race. But if you're black and you're brown, the reality is um, that when the mainstream America has a headache, black and brown folks have pneumonia. The, we're all sick. We, 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 we tend to be terminal because our, our, we never got the memo on free enterprise and capitalism and money. Uh, that's the memo that we talk about in the Freedmen's Bank. Just tying all this stuff together for you. The civil rights movement uh, is about really fulfilling the unfinished work of the Freedmen's Bank uh, from 1865, Abraham Lincoln. That's my Hope Inside Network. Um, in public schools, that's Hope Business in a Box Academies. That's Internship America, Hope Coalition America, our Hope Corps. All of the work that we're doing in communities, opening an office a week. But I've talked about, I, I made a, a really provocative uh, video that's got like 700,000, near 700,000 views about the, the modern slavery. And it got a lot of controversy uh, talking about credit scores now credit scores in low wealth neighborhoods are always like 500 or below and that you have check cashers and payday loan lenders and rental own stores and title lenders and liquor stores that are playing on uh good people who live in these neighborhoods who didn't get the memo on money uh and who don't realize they're living in modern slavery uh and that in these same neighborhoods you have all the negative demographics uh that affect these communities high unemployment low levels of hope high levels of dropout rates, uh, high domestic abuse levels, um, a high level of predatory lending, uh, low, levels, low levels of home ownership, low levels of entrepreneurship, if I didn't say it, high levels of homicide and crime. There's nothing wrong with you. There's nothing wrong with these communities. We aren't dumb and we aren't stupid. It's what we don't know that we don't know that's killing us. But we think we know because we never got the memo on free enterprise, capitalism, and money. And by the way, please tell your friends to stop saying this, that, free, that capitalism is evil. Please stop, please stop that. I'll do a whole video on this topic. Uh, but let me just say, we say we hate rich people. We hate capitalists. No, we don't. We hate rich people until we become rich. <laughs> what you hate is a corrupt person. What you hate is somebody gaming the system. What you hate is somebody who's manipulating you. What you hate is somebody who's greedy uh, and who's not playing by the rules. You actually have a capitalist living next to you the guy or woman who owns a small business. If anybody in your family is selling Avon or is an insurance broker or owns a little, a little, a little shop or old barber shop, those are all capitalist folks. If, you're buy, if you have a car note, you're living in a capitalist system. So unless you're gonna move to Haiti or someplace, stop complaining about it and let's start mastering it. So this is about mastering it, credit scores. A credit score is more important today than your public record was 20 years ago. So if you had a felony 20 years ago, that was a kiss of death. You could do nothing. But today, you could actually have a felony on your record, redeemed yourself, paid your debt to society, 
went to prison, whatever, came out, redeemed yourself, and you are, a, 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 you know, you're cool now. You still have that on your record, but you have a 700 credit score. Boom. You've got the doors of opportunity open to you. Half of all employers today require a credit check before they'll hire you. So yes, they're going to check your public record, but they're also going to check your credit record. So you say, okay, John, they may still not hire you. That's true. But you can now start a small business. No one's going to check your public record when they uh, approve you for an SBA loan, approve you for a small business loan, or to become an entrepreneur. Uh, they're going to just check your credit record. You become a homeowner. Just, they're going to check your credit record. So if you can't get a job, create a job. So when I was coming up, uh, I started my first business when I was 10. Had my first, my uh, you know, 100 business ideas by the time I was uh, 20. Most of them failed, by the way. My credit stunk. I was homeless for six months of my life uh, from age 18 to age eight, 18 and a half. Uh, I, I thought about fi filing for bankruptcy. I didn't. I decided to own up to my responsibilities. My, my credit score at that point was well below 500. So I'm not talking about you. I'm talking to you. I'm talking to you as someone who has been there myself. I decided to redeem myself and to fight back, right? And so here I am today uh, with a 700 and, I don't know, 50 or 760 credit score as an entrepreneur. See, I'm not going anywhere. I'm still here, everybody. So, uh, and and while I went from a 500 credit score to a 750 credit score, I now have that, an Amex black card. I have, I now have that, right? You can have that, and much more. Uh, so here's how credit scores work. Um, the problem with discrimination is it's arbitrary. Credit scores are not arbitrary. Credit scores not, uh, uh, are very factual, which means you can win this game. So let's assume you have a 500 credit score. The first thing that's wrong is that you've not checked your credit. And I know you haven't checked your credit because if you checked your credit, you wouldn't have a 500 credit score. <laughs> because I guarantee you, there are errors on your credit. So a lady walks into a, a Hope Inside location at SunTrust Banks in um, Memphis. She's declined for a mortgage loan uh, for $140,000. She's upset, understandably so. She's got a credit score of 540 or something like that. She's referred to us by the bank, because the bank can't tell her yes at 540. We, with our permission, pull her credit, find out she's got an error. So the first thing you're gonna find when you pull your credit is that you have an error in your credit report. So the law states, listen to me now, the law states if the credit bureaus, there's three of them, there's Equifax, there's TransUnion, and there's, um, um, oh, Equifax, TransUnion, and um, Experian. The, tr the law states if you, if the, if the credit bureaus cannot confirm the error, they've got to remove it. If they cannot confirm that something is, is, is true on your credit report, listen to me now, they have got by law to re re remove it in 30 days. So if, if our Hope Inside coaches at a Hope Inside location uh, dispute something for you, and we're willing to do it by the way, all our services are free, uh, and we find that, 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 they, that the credit uh, provider, I'm back, if the credit provider cannot respond within 30 days, the law states they must remove it. When that happens, boom, you get a 10 point, 30 point, 40 point boost in your credit score. So now you've gone from 540 to 570. You've gone from 680 to 710 with one uh, act. Number two, you're gonna find that you've got a charge off, maybe from a divorce, maybe from something that happened 10 years ago. That's what happened to this lady. She had a charge off from Pacific Bell. Uh, we said, well, good news for you is Pacific Bell doesn't exist anymore. She had that when she lived here in Oakland, California. Um, Pac Bell was, was bought by SBC Communications, which was bought by AT&T. Doesn't exist anymore. She says, yeah, that's my debt. So own up to your debts. Own up to your responsibilities. Don't shirk it. If you borrowed the money and you didn't pay it back, just say I didn't pay it back, right? Don't say they're racist and <laughs> this is some kind of game. No. If you borrowed the money uh, and even if it was predatory, nobody forced you to do it. Right? Be smart about money. Don't borrow the money at 18% interest rate anymore. That's a kiss of death. Don't go to a payday loan lender four times. You'll, you'll never pay it back. Payday loan lenders are designed to take your money and keep you in bondage for the rest of your life. Back to the topic. So she had uh, this $1,000 charge off for credit for a, a, a phone bill. We said, well, the good news is that Joe's Finance Company bought that debt. I know at the bottom of the memo on her credit bureau, Joe's Finance Company bought the debt. I know that the Joe's Finance Company bought it for 50 cents. I'm sorry, not 50 cents on the dollar. They bought it for 50 uh, bucks total. So it was a $1,000 bill 10 years ago. The company wrote it off. So they bought it for 50 bucks. So I had my credit people call and we offered them $100. I'm sorry, they asked for $100 to pay it off. We said, we'll give you $200. The guy says, well, why do you want to pay me double what I'm asking for? 
because if I pay you double, I want you to remove this from her credit bureau and I want you to write a letter to her and to me confirming that it's been removed and I want you to be available to us in the future should we need to come back to you to confirm that this has been satisfied. So the borrower got a 80% discount. The credit provider, in this, the credit owner in this example, the debt owner had a 200% profit. Fair exchange is no robbery, my, my best friend Rob McGrew would say. And everybody won in that situation and she paid her obligation. We were able to, to then work on some budgeting issues. She was going to Starbucks three times a week. That's like, you know, that's, I mean, you go to Starbucks three times a week and you smoke two packs of cigarettes a day and you make $36,000, you're using 20% of your income for, for Starbucks, coffee, and cigarettes. So there's two ways to make money, make more or spend less. So we helped her with her budget uh, uh, and, set, and really helped to set herself free. She raised her credit score 80 points in three months working with our team and walked back in across the hall with dignity to SunTrust Banks and was approved for a mortgage for $140,000 to become a homeowner in Memphis, Tennessee, to put a roof over her house, her head, to put dignity in her house, to safety for her family and her children, pay a taxpayer for Memphis, Tennessee. She became a stakeholder and a part of the American dream and now she has a hedge fund against poverty which is home ownership. And by the way, when she makes that mortgage payment, if you make a $1,000 mortgage payment versus paying $1,000 for rent, you pay $1,000 for rent, you're opening a window and you're throwing the money out. You're opening a window and you're throwing the money out. You get no credit for that. None. Zip zero. But if you pay $1,000 for a mortgage payment, in the early years of a 30-year fully amortized mortgage, 80% of that mortgage payment will be right offable off of your tax returns. So that means you'll be to take $800 a month, and in most examples, 50 bucks, I mean, you gotta check with your, your financial advisor, don't take my exact word and don't hold me to this, but somewhere between half to 80% of that, in the early years, you'll be able to get that, that back uh, in a tax refund, <laughs> okay? So uh, there are many benefits to home ownership. There are many, many benefits to raising your credit score. By the way, when you raise your credit score from 550 to 650, to 6, to 650 or 620, your self-esteem rises, your confidence rises, your dignity rises, your belief in yourself rises, your optionality ri uh, raises. By the way, that lady went from uh, you know uh, an offering that would have cost her nine or 10% of a, to get a mortgage someplace else to getting a prime rate mortgage, like 4% from SunTrust Banks. That it makes all the difference in the world. World, right so you want to set yourself free you want to get your credit score right uh, and that's why we're doing hope 700 credit score communities there's never been a middle-class riot in America's history <laughs> okay I'm letting that sit in there's never been a 700 credit score community riot in America's history a black community white community Latino Asian Indian other there's never been a 700 credit score community that's ever rioted only poor neighborhoods riot and so there is a difference between being broke and being poor. Being broke is economic, but being poor is a disabling frame of mind, a depressed condition of your spirit, and you must vow never to be poor again. Stop going around saying this is a game that can't be won. Stop going around saying it's a conspiracy that you can't figure out. Stop going around listening to people who are saying that America is you know, dedicated to your failure and that you know, racism is keeping you down. No, racism is not keeping you from getting your credit score up. So doing the things I just talked about, racism is not keeping you from uh, starting your own business when somebody won't let you into their business. No, you've got to fix your mind because slavery really is embedded up here. They used to have us by our hands, our hands and our feet. They used to have us in shackles like 300 years ago. But now it's mental slavery, it's emotional slavery, it's depression. Our get up and go, and sometimes we've got up and went, we're, we're not feeling good about ourselves. But we can change that. And if you hang around nine broke people, you'll be the 10th. You hang around nine depressed people, you'll be the 10th. You hang around nine gangsters, you'll be the 10th. You, you hang around nine people with a broke toe up credit score, you'll be the 10th. But if you hang around nine successful people, nine positive people, nine aspirational people, you'll be the 10th. Create a little club in your neighborhood of aspirationally positive people. Create a little club in your, in your home or in your block to own stocks. You can buy stocks for like, 10 bucks. You can buy fractional stocks. I don't want to start selling a company here, but you can buy fractional stocks at like five bucks, 10 bucks at a time. Buy pieces of stocks and just get in the habit of investing and becoming part of Don't get mad at the game. Master it. All right. I'm out. This has been a long video. It's been 14 minutes. I hope this has been helpful uh, to you. I've been, I'm getting dizzy with the bouncing around for the phone here. 
Uh, let's see if we can t answer some questions before we go. Lance uh, Jackson says, I agree. Uh, Rodney says, teach, teach. Thank you. Uh, Garcia Guest. Angela Thor uh, Thornton Hayes. Be you transformed by the renewing of the mind. Amen. Troy Hurst raced a 750 credit score. By the way, my mother, Juanita Smith, has an 840 credit score. Unbelievable. That's a bad girl. Uh, I asked her when she's going to get married again. She says, yeah, I'll get married. Maybe it'll be a BMW, a black man working. <laughs> my mother will check your credit before she dates you. Okay. Uh, Claudia uh, uh, Menza. Um, got Alan. Uh, looks like he's from, um, well, it looks like Turkey. So we, I'm going to get uh, interrupted here in a minute, so I'm going to have to sign off. We have uh, Jaris, Claudia, Garcia, Larry Jones. Hello, brother. How are you doing? I'm doing fine. James, Dominique, uh, Tanya. I've been tr trying to decide if I should pay a guy who, who do that 800 but I'm hearing I could get it that hell free. No, don't pay anybody. All these scam artists trying to take your money to do what we do for free. Go to OperationHope.org. We do it for free. Get the book, How the Pork and Save Capitalism. Get the knowledge in your head for 14 bucks, okay? Don't let anybody take advantage of you anymore. Okay, I got to go. I'm almost in the city. Love you much. I may do another video this evening, uh, but let me know whether you want me to. I may do a video of how to go from, CE from homeless to CEO, my journey. Let me know whether you think that's a good idea. Peace and light. Love you much. Silver rights.